Hello Flosstube, it is Thursday the 2nd of December 2021 and I'm Sarah from So Me Sarah and I'm here today to show you a little tutorial on how to mount your finished stitching in a hoop. So that stitching might be cross stitch or it might be embroidery but the question is how do you get it into the hoop and neatly finished? So when I showed this one, which I made for my son, when I showed this one a few weeks ago on my regular floss tube videos, um, Danielle from the Cardiff Stitcher asked if I would consider doing a little tutorial. So here we are, Danielle, this is for you and for anyone else who might find it helpful just to see how you can go about mounting your finished piece into a hoop. There are many ways of doing this I'm sure and my way will just be one of them but I will try and give you hints and tips along the way and hopefully you will find this helpful. Let's start with a little look at the tools and materials that you will need to be able to frame your embroidery in a hoop. First of all you will need the hoop itself so here you can see I have a, a wooden embroidery hoop and I've separated that into the outer hoop and the inner hoop. The outer hoop as at the top of the screen, as you can see, has the screw adjustment on the top of it. And the inner hoop is the bottom of the screen. Now the outer hoop at the top of the screen is sitting on a piece of wadding. And if you are going to use wadding, and it is optional, and I will explain that shortly, but if you're going to use wadding, then you set your hoop on it and make sure that you have a piece that's big enough that's going to wrap up around the edges of your hoop. Okay, so a piece that's probably about half an inch or an inch bigger than your hoop. You can see mine's slightly bigger than that again. That's not a problem. Down below is the inner part of the wooden hoop. And I have this lying on a piece of felt that is going to be the backing. Once you have everything uh, stretched, laced in the frame, you'll want to put a little piece of backing on perhaps just to um, protect your piece of work. So I use just a little bit of felt, use the inner hoop of the embroidery hoop, draw around it and then cut out that circle. So that will give you the exact size of the circle that you will need to pop on the back when you are finished. And we will pop that on with the glue and I use a glue brush. So I have Yoohoo multi-purpose adhesive or a good fabric glue. And I just use the brush to spread the glue a little bit and stop any globbing later on. And you can see I also have two pairs of scissors, one large pair for cutting out the larger pieces of fabric and a finer pair of embroidery scissors to snip and do some fine cutting work in the process. And then I have a thread and a needle. Uh, in this instance, the piece of embroidery that I'm going to put in my hoop is on quite a fine piece of um, cotton linen. So I am using a fine thread for that but if you were using something like an Ada then you would want to use a more heavyweight thread perhaps an upholstery thread or even a pearl cotton if you have some um, spare lying around and that you don't mind to use. So just um, you'll need a needle and a thread that suits the fabric that you are trying to frame in the hoop and of course then you'll need your piece of embroidery or cross stitch and you'll see that I have already cut my piece and it is cut about two inches bigger than the hoop. So that will give me plenty of excess fabric to wrap around the back and lace and pull tightly. So I have used it between an inch and a half and two inches and seems to work best. So that is everything you'll need and now I will take you through step by step. Now that we've gathered all our supplies, let's take our piece of wadding and lay it flat on the table in front of us. And then we're going to take our piece of stitching, which we will have prepared by pressing nicely. And just in case you don't uh, already know how to approach that, when I have a piece of stitching, if I'm working with DMC threads, I will usually gently wash my piece. So I'll soak it for a few minutes in some soapy water, some just very gentle dish detergent or, or a gentle, a mild, um, a mild washing powder, tiny bit in some warm water, 
uh, let it soak for a minute or two, give it a swish around, rinse it really well so that there's no more soap residue in there. And then I will layer this between two towels and pat it dryish. Okay. Then I'll take it to my ironing board and laying it face down, so the stitching face down on top of the ironing board, I'll press from the back. And the pressing, the heat of your iron will press that dry. It will start to dry it and it will dry it nice and flat. Now there is a difference if you are working with the over dyed flosses because they can run and they're not always color fast. So do be careful in that case, you probably don't want to wash your piece, but you could press it from the back just in the same way to prepare your piece for mounting. So we've got a beautifully ironed piece of stitching and we're going to lay that on top of the wadding. Now you can see that my pieces, they're not the same size, but they're, they are going to fit well within the parameters of the hoop. And I just want to make sure at this stage that I've got my wadding and my piece nice and flat laid together. Then I'm gonna pop, this is the this is the outer hoop and this is the inner hoop. So I'm going to pop the inner hoop underneath. Okay, and see if I can get that kind of in the right position, roughly. And then I'm going to pop my outer hoop. I'm gonna loosen it a bit because we are adding a layer of fabric and a layer of wadding here. And we're gonna pop it over the piece of embroidery. Now at this stage, you want to decide if it's not obvious, which way is up and which way is down on your piece of embroidery and make sure that the screw is in the right area. So I think I will actually turn this piece this way and go there. So, as I've positioned my hoop, I'm not sure if you can see this terribly well close up, but what I've got is more border space down here than up here. So I'm not quite centered. So I want to move things another little bit and just adjust until I've got the piece pretty much how I want it. So and then push your embroidery hoop down on top of your piece. Okay, at this stage, you can see, and you can, this stage you can have a wee look and just see, do you want to make any more adjustments? Do you need to pull it? Do you need to smooth out any wrinkles? Keep your hoop reasonably taut, doesn't have to be too tight just right this minute, but you want it taut enough, tight enough that you can pull your piece of fabric taut. So you're making sure that this is just all smooth, there are no wrinkles in your fabric. You can just pull, pull and adjust as you go round. And sometimes those small adjustments actually make quite a difference. So it is worth doing. So there's a little bit less here of a border. So we could pull it up a little bit up here. And this is the bit I just call fiddling. So you can see I'm working my thumb around and I'm pulling the fabric tighter. I hope you can see this. I've tried a better angle today. Okay, so that's all nice. I think that's pretty much how I want it. I'm happy with how flat that is, how taut it is. So what I want to do now is tighten the screw so that it doesn't pop out or come loose again. Now, sometimes it's not obvious to people, but the screws often have a little notch in the end, which means you can use a screwdriver to tighten if you're not able to do that with your hands. And sometimes it is quite painful to do with your hands. So don't be afraid to just get your screwdriver and give it that extra little tweak to hold things in place. So it's looking pretty, but clearly 
what we want to do now is tidy up all this excess. And in this piece, I added wadding. Now, the wadding is optional. You don't have to always have it. But as you can see, this piece of embroidery that I am framing today is quite is on a very fine, fine linen. And so I wanted to add the wadding just so that it doesn't become see-through, just to give it a little bit more structure. But you don't have to have it. And I didn't use any wadding when I framed this piece with the Ada because it is a heavier fabric so there wasn't any problem with anything showing through so I didn't use it it is optional but if you want to use it then this is how so that's why I wanted to show you and I'm sorry I don't have a piece of cross stitch to mount today I don't actually have something that's ready for the hoop but all the principles are the same with just the exception that you will have different weights of fabric so you'll have this very very fine linen or maybe you've stitched on a very embroidered on a very fine cotton or perhaps you have cross stitched on a linen or an even weave or a crunchy ada and the different textures the softness the crunchiness of your fabric will have an impact on how easy it is to get it into the hoop but it can all be done it just maybe requires slightly stronger thread as i said in the tools and uh, materials, little insert. Um, and sometimes it requires just a little bit more welly. <laughs> you need to pull a bit harder to, um, to make things lace properly and stretch, but um, just make sure that you use an appropriate weight thread um, for the weight of your fabric. There's no point in this very fine linen and be using a very, very thick thread because it will just simply pull the linen apart um, when we're trying to stretch things. So, as I said, the principles are the same. So now I have this piece of stitching mounted and there's a piece of wadding in here. But I want to get rid of the excess wadding. So at this point, I'm going to take a pair of very sharp little embroidery scissors and extremely carefully, I am going to hold back my stitching fabric and I am going to cut away this excess wadding or batting, okay? Please, please, please be really careful not to put a hole in your stitched fabric at this stage <clears throat> because it will make you want to cry. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> so hopefully you can see, I'm just going down very closely, pull the wadding in towards the center that helps you to keep your scissors away from your main fabric. And you're just very gently and slowly snipping all the way around. As I said, you don't have to have the wadding in here at all, but I thought it was an, a nice step to show you. And it does add a little bit of um, puffiness. That's probably not even the right way to describe it. It just adds a little bit of softness to your piece when it's finished. So we're snipping as carefully as we can to avoid any holes in our main fabric. And we're just cutting it down level to the top of our hoop. So my scissors actually resting on the inside of the hoop as we go round. I hope that you can see that. And we're nearly there. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> Just nice and easy does it at the end. Don't get scissor happy and make a mistake. <laughs> and there we go. So I'll just get rid of all the excess and you can see that the wadding is now trimmed flush with the edge of the hoop, pretty much. Okay, so we've still got these still looking lovely on the front. Just check at all these stages that nothing has shifted or moved or pulled. Maybe your hoop wasn't tight enough and something might have moved. And when you're happy with the position, 
retighten your hoop if you've had to work at something. And now we're going to work at pulling in this excess fabric to tidy up and give us a nice clean line on the front. Now there are two ways of doing this. <clears throat> Sometimes I will do it simply by catching a running stitch the whole way around the excess fabric in a circle and then you pull that tight to draw it in like, uh, like a drawstring bag really. Pull it in tight and fasten it off with a few extra stitches and a knot and sometimes that works. It works much better I feel on lighter fabrics like this one for example. Um, it will work nicely that way. Sometimes on the heavier fabrics it doesn't work just quite so well but it is a better job to do a little bit of lacing and so that's what I'm going to show you here on the tutorial today but you can try the running stitch technique and if it works for you and if you're happy with how well and how tightly you're able to pull in all this excess fabric then by all means use it. Really you're just trying to achieve a nice tight pull in on the back here so that you can then put a backing on and hang to frame. Okay, But for the purposes of the tutorial today I'm just going to show you how I go about lacing the back. And you'll know that a few weeks ago I did a little tutorial and showed how to lace a piece um, of your stitching onto a, a rectangular card and so the technique is not not overly different with this. However on that tutorial I showed that you can use a continuous length that you don't have to cut the thread off your spool and you can you can pull and adjust and pull and adjust so that you're only ever using the one length. I find that technique, which hopefully I've explained well there, that didn't sound terribly great, <laughs> but, but I find that technique harder in a circle because what we will do when we're lacing in the circle is we'll start at a point on one side and we'll go straight across to the other side and then we'll move, let's say, a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch clockwise around. So we're going to go here to here and then another bit clockwise here to here and we're going to keep working around and we'll be at opposite points working all the way around. That means that your threads are being laced back and forward across each other and creating a, um, a mass of threads in the centre. So you'll see when I'm doing that, that we're going to lace back and forward and back and forward and it will become quite thick in the centre and that is harder then to find the individual threads to pull it tight, which is what you do when you don't take your thread off the spool. So all of that to say, don't do it that way. <laughs> and um, so what we will do, what I will do with this one is take a really, as long a length as I think I could practically work with and just cut that off the spool and I'm going to put a good triple knot in the end of my thread. I hope you can see but it's not very exciting it's just a triple knot you're not missing much <laughs> and we'll pull that knot up so there it is again sorry you can't really see now just be careful, you've got a really, really long length of thread. You don't want to get that all knotted, uh, all tangled in itself. So I'm going to choose a position on the fabric, the excess fabric. So let's say as, as I look at it, I'm going to start at say three o'clock over here. And I'm just going to put in a little stitch to get me started. And I'm going to pull all the way to my knot and just be gentle because it would be very easy to pull it all the way through. And I'm going to take three or four stitches just over the top of that. It's just to give it a really secure start because we're going to pull on this to create the tension that helps our lacing. Okay, so I've got a 
not, uh, sorry, the light is blowing this out. I don't know, can you see? Let's see if you can see that up there. Okay. That's just a starting position. It doesn't have to look particularly beautiful. If you are skilled at making it look beautiful, then well done. <laughs> okay, so this is three o'clock. I'm going to work straight across the circle to nine o'clock and I'm working about half an inch to an inch into the fabric. Just that's where my needle is going to be, probably about three quarters of an inch into the fabric actually. And I'm going to come up from underneath as I go over the other side, I'm going to come up underneath and come out about three quarters of an inch on this side. I'm going to pull just so it doesn't get tangled. Give that a little bit of a pull. Oops, sorry. To tighten that up. You can see how I can pull it and it tightens itself in. Okay. So my next stitch is going back again towards nine o'clock. So, okay, so, sorry. Back again towards three o'clock, straight across the circle, but then just come clockwise about three eighths of an inch down. Take your stitch under, back across the other side. Again, about three eighths of an inch away. And pull again. Okay, it's another, so lots of stitches and we're pulling them. Sorry, it's not great. Okay. Again, back to the other side of the circle. Again, just moving around another little bit, another three eighths of an inch and back up to the other side. And this is what we're going to keep doing. Moving back and forward across the circle around about a quarter of an or three quarters of an inch in from the edge of the fabric. And we're gonna just pull it to tighten it as we go. I'm sure there are people who can make this look extremely neat and tidy. I'm not there yet, <laughs> but um, that's why we put a little piece of felt backing on that hides a multitude of messy sins. They're not really sins, it's just a little bit untidy looking, I guess. Um, but it all serves its purpose and the lacing really does help pull in your fabric and keep everything in place where it ought to be. So I'm not doing anything different at this stage. I'm still working my way around the circle. I'm pulling to just keep the tension on everything as we go. And I think as usual, as I would usually say with all of these things, you know, be kind to yourself. Don't expect perfection first off. <laughs> um, let yourself learn and grow. So maybe don't do your best, most precious heirloom, heirloom piece first. <laughs> but, um, you know, practice on some small pieces. Now I've come to the end of my thread. I don't have enough left. So what I want to do is to pull everything nice and tight, keep the needle on the thread, pull everything as tightly as you can, just 
Be careful not to put too much pressure on it in case your thread snaps. And then fasten off. I'm just taking some more kind of triple, quadruple stitches here to fasten off this thread, and keeping that all nice and taut. And I'm going to need to start an, another thread because I didn't have quite the length I needed to get all the way around. Just cut your excess thread away. And we're going to just have another piece of thread and give it another go to finish off the lacing. So I'll be back with you whenever I have all of that done. Okay, so I have now finished lacing the hoop. It's not as neat as I would like, but it's going to be fine. What you want to make sure is that these tucks and folds are as flat as they can be. So you will find, for example, if you're working with a sturdier fabric, an Ada perhaps, that some of these might be a little bit more rigid. And it is possible to just take them to the heat of an iron and just press down gently on them um, to kind of flatten them out just a little bit more. But basically everything is pulled nice and tight. The, the fabric, This fabric is going nowhere and it's all nicely taut and stretched on the front, which we did with our hoop tension but we're keeping it in place with the lacing as well. And now all that's left is to tidy this up further if you want to. If you don't, it's going to hang on a wall with the back hidden. So you could get away without it, but it just adds a nice little finishing touch to finish it off with a piece of felt. As I said earlier, we used the inner hoop and that's why we did it earlier because now our inner hoop is not accessible to us. <laughs> so at the early stages, make sure you've cut the circle of felt to the size of your inner hoop. That will now fit nicely on here. And what we're going to do is glue that in place. I just use this Yuhu multi-purpose adhesive glue. Uh, my favourite is actually a Bostick fabric and all-purpose glue, but I haven't been able to find it recently locally. So I've been using this one. And then we're just going to take some glue and we're going to run a circle of glue around, quite close to the edge, but not right on the edge of the hoop, of the, of the circle. Not right on the outer, because what we don't want is any glue blobbing out. So I'm putting a nice amount here that will catch the felt and hold it. But as I said, not too much. And that's why I use the brush. So I'll just spread that around to make sure that there's plenty of glue right the whole way around the circle for my felt to make contact with. And then just as easy as all that, we will pop the felt circle on the back and glue it in place. Now, for those of you who have just had a heart attack <laughs> because you're thinking, I don't want to put glue on my fabric, on my stitching, then don't. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. What you can do is lay your circle of felt down and whip stitch it all the way around just nice tiny neat little whip stitches which means that you could come back at a later time unpick the stitches and rescue your piece of st of stitching uh, however this is not an heirloom piece this is a decor piece for me and i'm quite happy to put a little bit of glue on just press it down make sure that there's plenty of good contact with it between the felt and the fabric and hey presto, job's a good one. That is how you mount your stitched piece in an embroidery hoop for display. Now I also have a little tutorial about how you can fabric wrap a hoop and that will give you a different effect to this, like so. 
So if you would like to see how to fabric wrap your hoop, then please go to my floss tube extra number two and there will be instructions on how to do that there. It's not difficult and it is worth the effort and it does add a nice finish. But sometimes you won't want to, sometimes you'll just be happy to have the plain hoop or perhaps you'll have bought a decorative hoop, one that's already painted and, and you'll just need the main mounting instructions. That is how you mount your embroidery in a hoop. I hope this will be useful to many of you. Please let me know if you use the tutorial and let me know if it's successful. And I wish you well with all your finishes. Bye for now.